Hi everyone, my name is Robbe Sneders. I'm head of delivery at ML6, which is a machine learning consultancy company, uh, which means that we build end-to-end yeah, -end solutions for clients using machine learning. Um, today I'll be talking about Apache Beam, uh, and specifically how we can use it to build machine learning workflows combining Java and Python. Why am I talking about Apache Beam? Um, so it's one of the main tools in our tech stack. We use it quite a lot. Um, and we also try to contribute where we can. So in the past, we worked a lot on porting from Python 2 to Python 3. And now we're very involved with the, um, yeah, let's say machine learning related uh, side of Apache Beam as well, providing a lot of input there, uh, building tutorials and content so people can use it uh, easier. So maybe start with a warning. Uh, we're at a conference organized by the Java community, but as you might have guessed based on the title, uh, the presentation does contain some Python code. Luckily, it's uh, almost as easy to read as, as plain English, so I don't think that will be a problem. And a second warning, it also uh, contains some Java code written or edited by myself, um, so please uh, don't uh, judge. So if you look at the agenda, um, I'll first give a short introduction about Apache Beam. I've been talking to some people the past days and it's clear that it's not as known yet as I think it should be. Um, so I think uh, a general introduction will be very useful for a lot of people. Then we'll look at how to build a basic pipeline uh, to finally move on to multi-language pipelines. I'll quickly go over how you can use Beam for machine learning. And then finally, we'll yeah, put it all together to see how you can uh, combine Java and Python to create machine learning workflows with Beam. Um, so for the general introduction, maybe quickly how it started. Um, so it started as Dataflow uh, developed by Google. This is the original Dataflow paper, I think from 2015. Um, and you can see that it focuses on an approach to balance trade-offs in streaming processing. So it's about balancing correctness, latency, and cost. Um, for uh, unbounded data. So this is still one of the uh, many strengths of Apache Beam, but it's gone a lot further since then. So the next uh, step is generalization to batch and streaming. And there's a very good book and two blog posts about this by the original authors, which I can recommend if you want to learn about the theoretical side of how you can uh, yeah, build a unified model for uh, batch and streaming systems. And then finally, it was also open source as Apache Beam, uh, available on GitHub and very actively developed. So if you want to look at the code, uh, that's where you can find it. Now I started with explaining that it focuses on, on uh, streaming processing. So naturally, it contains a lot of uh, features to handle streaming data, like windowing, watermarks, triggers, uh, state, and timers. But I won't talk about those today, they're a bit out of scope, but I do want to mention uh, that there's a lot of goodies. Should you want to move to streaming use cases in the future, and uh, there's nothing holding you back if you are using Beam. So beyond just the unified streaming and batch uh, programming model, uh, there's also a big focus on portability with Beam. And this is in, in a couple of dimensions. And the first one is that it can be executed across multiple execution environments. Second is that it's multi-language. So that's as the case for a lot of different languages and you can even build cross-language pipelines. And then finally, yeah, it's uh, open source, but there is a very strong community and also a wider ecosystem uh, being built on top of Beam. So if we look a bit closer into this portability, uh, we can see that it's in yeah, multiple dimensions. So we have, the again, the unified programming model for streaming and batch, but there's also a lot of uh, sources and syncs you can use to connect to databases to read or write. Um, there's the different languages, and then, as I mentioned, the execution runners. And if you look at a quick overview of those, you can see that it's quite broad. Um, so there's currently SDKs for Java, Python, Go, and Scala, and then two uh, more special ones. One is Pandas, uh, a very popular data processing framework in Python, which provides the data frame API, which uh, Beam has adopted as well. And you can even define your pipelines using SQL. You can run it almost everywhere you want. So uh, if you know the logos, you can uh, see Flink, Spark, Google Cloud Dataflow, Amazon Kinesis, Samza, Twister, Nemo, and uh, Hazelcast. Um, so that's quite a lot of choices on where you can run your pipelines. Now, how does Beam achieve this? 
well, it uses the portability framework, uh, which you can yeah, represent like this. So you have your different language SDKs. You can use each of them to uh, yeah, describe your pipeline. And they are all translated into a general pipeline um, yeah, kind of schema, which is based on Protoss via the uh, runner API. So you build the pipeline with your language SDK and gets transformed into this general representation. The runner uses this representation um, and then via the fun API, it can actually execute uh, it again in the relevant uh, yeah, execution environment, which is linked to your original SDK. If you describe your pipeline in Python, then you will execute in the Python environment as well, but you can do it on any of uh, yeah, the, the frameworks I just mentioned. So we'll go a bit deeper into this uh, later, but first I want to have a look at what a basic pipeline in Beam looks like. So there's four really basic uh, concepts that we need to know. Um, and the first one is the pipeline itself. So that's just a data processing job, which contains of um, uh, yeah, data input of some transformations and then a data output. And it is defined as a DAG. So you first define your pipeline and then later you execute it to actually run data through it. Um, between every, let's say, transformation, you have, of course, data flowing, and uh, this is always represented as a P collection, which is either a bounded or unbounded uh, data set. And so every time from input to between transforms to output, um, your data is, is represented in the same way. And then your transformations themselves are P transforms. Um, so they are yeah, parallel data processing steps in the pipeline, um, which can take in one or multiple P collections and uh, output another. And then finally, your I.O. sources and syncs. So those are APIs to read and write uh, from and to databases. So if we uh, take a look at a very simple example, uh, we here have a minimal word count, which is with the hello world from the data processing. So it takes in a text and it will count the occurrences of the words in that text. So here we are uh, reading King Lear. Uh, from Shakespeare, and uh, we will first yeah, read it from an input, input file. You can see on the right the pipeline. We will read the lines, split it into words, count the occurrence of the words, format them into a string, and then write them to an output file. On the left, you can see how this is done in Java code. So first, we create the pipeline using pipeline options, and then we apply transformations to the pipeline. So again, you can see the same there, uh, read, split, Filter I left out because uh, uh, you can see it as part of split. Um, count, format, and write. And you can see again, we first uh, built our deck, and then finally we have a line to execute the pipeline, uh, which uh, uh, yeah, starts and reading the data and processing it. Again, since we're talking about multi-language, I want to show you what it looks like in Python as well. Um, here, it's, it's very similar. We start with our uh, pipeline. We construct all the transformations, but instead of the apply uh, function, you can see that we use binary operators here. So the pipe symbol is the same as apply uh, in uh, Java. So this is actually uh, yeah, syntax you get used to at start, but once uh, you know it, it's, it's very elegant. You can see the same steps uh, being used, the read, split, count, format, write. And what you don't see here is the explicit run. Uh, this is because it's implicit in the width context. So we build the pipeline in the width context. Once we exit it, uh, the, the pipeline will be executed. You can make this explicit in Python as well. So a very simple pipeline that just goes from the input on the left, our text, to the output on the right, uh, our word counts. So now you have an idea of what a basic pipeline looks like. Uh, let's take a deeper look into the multi-language pipelines, which uh, are a bit more interesting. So the, uh, a multi-language pipeline is a pipeline that combines transforms written in different SDKs. So this is very useful because, first of all, it grows a pool of available transforms in all the languages. If you have it in one language, you can reuse it in another which is yeah, good for availability, but also for maintaining. You only need to maintain one version, um, and which uh, prevents feature drift between different languages. And then next, uh, you can implement every transform in the most suitable language. For a database connection, that might be Java. For a machine learning model, that might be Python. Um, now, you always still have your main SDK, and you borrow uh, transforms from other SDKs. So uh, you can see on the left, there it is a Python pipeline, and it borrows a Java transform. 
On the right, we have a Java pipeline which borrows a Python transform. Now to see again how this maps to the portability framework, um, this is what I showed at the start, but this gives you all possible options. It's not the description of a single pipeline. If we actually look at a single language pipeline, it collapses into the choices you make. So you choose one SDK, which runs on one runner, which executes in a single um, execution environment. This is, of course, uh, assuming that, uh, again, all transformations are implemented in the same SDK as they are in the simple pipeline. Now, when I say they are executed in the same environment, it's the same uh, yeah, type of environment, but it can, of course, be multiple instances because uh, Apache Beam allows you to parallelize your transforms. Now, if we look at how this then translates to multi-language pipelines, you still have your main SDK. Uh, so again, here Java, but you can uh, borrow transforms from the other SDKs, Python or others. Uh, for now, it's mostly Python that is already supported, but the others will be supported better in the future as well. Um, they are then, as one pipeline, again, translated to the runner, and then the runner executes it in those different environments that it needs. If you have Python and Java, transforms in your pipeline, you will need a Python and Java execution environment on your workers as well. So it's not for free, um, but Apache Beam uh, handles this for a big part for you. So if you look at an example, again, this time from a Python pipeline with a uh, Java transformation, which is actually a uh, read transformation from Kafka, then it works like this. Um, you have your Python SDK uh, where you define your pipeline, you have your Java step, and uh, Beam spins up an expansion service that will do the translation of this pipeline to the general pipeline scheme. And it then inserts it into your uh, complete pipeline representation, which is sent to the runner. Your runner then uh, again executes it on the workers, where you see you need to have both environments available, the Python and the Java environments. Now, if you want to use cross-language transforms, there's two options. Um, the first one, is that you can use existing transforms from other SDKs without writing additional code in that SDK. So again, let's say we have a Java pipeline, we want to use a Python transform, uh, that you can use it without having to write additional Python code. Um, but that is not always available. Uh, if it is not available, what you can do is you can uh, also use arbitrary transforms or custom transforms in other SDKs, but then you will need to add additional code to expose and register those transforms for usage by other SDKs. Now, the second part is out of scope for today because it's a bit more uh, in-depth, but there's good resources on the Beam website if you would uh, want to go this way. Then if you look at a code example of a, a multi-language pipeline, um, again, let's look first at a Python pipeline using a Java transform. Then you can see that there's uh, some functionality that Beam offers to do this. So at the top, you can see we import the external transform class um, and then also a payload builder, which are two concepts that enable this. And then you can see that we built a, a typed scheme at the top. So whenever you use multi-language pipeline on the edge between your uh, languages, you need to have uh, a typed interface, which is understood by both sides. So you need to express it in either, um, let's say, native types or uh, beam types. If we then look at the construction of the pipeline, you can see that we use the external transform class and we provided a URN to the uh, transform that you want to use. In this case, the beam transform uh, or Apache beam Kafka read with metadata v1. We can provide arguments to that transform as well, which we do with the payload builder. Um, so here we provided the consumer config and the topics we want to read from. So this already shows that it's quite easy. The, the whole uh, Kafka transform, looking at it from the inside, is of course a lot more complex. So this is already quite uh, easy to use, but it can even become easier. Um, so for popular cross-language transforms, Beam provides SDK wrappers. So in this case, we have the uh, Java Kafka transform, um, there is a, a Python wrapper for this, which is called read from Kafka. So here you can see it's as easy as just using a Python transform. Um, you can just yeah, call it as a class and provide some parameters. Now looking at the other way around, uh, looking at a Java pipeline which uses a Python transform, it is very similar. 
So it's the same pipeline we had before to do the uh, word counting. It's also the same steps except for the one in the middle, the count step. So there we will now use a Python transform. It's actually one from the data frame API, um, again, which allows you to use the Pandas data frame uh, API, which is very easy to do data processing. Um, so we use here the Python external transform uh, class. We provide it which transform we want to use, and then we can pass some keyword arguments. The first one is the function we want to apply to the data frame. So you can see it's a simple uh, Lambda function. It says uh, group the data frame by word and then sum it, uh, which of course translates to a count. Um, we mentioned that we want to include the indexes in the results, which we can then use to uh, format it again into the same text we had before, run the pipeline, and we achieve the same results. The only thing that is uh, possibly changed is the order, uh, because Beam uh, doesn't process in, uh, in order. Okay, so that's already a uh, big part of, of what pipelines uh, in Beam are. Now I quickly want to talk uh, to you about why it's an interesting tool for machine learning. So there's a couple of uh, features that make it interesting. And the first one is, of course, that it's easy to process large amounts of data, which is often important in machine learning use cases. But uh, another one is, is one of the core concepts I mentioned at the very start is that the same processing steps can be used for batch and streaming. And in machine learning, you often train in batch, uh, and your inference might be streaming. So there you want to use the same data transforms to make sure that you have consistent results, which is very important, and Beam uh, really supports this. Then processing and orchestration can be done in one pipeline. Uh, you often have an orchestrator framework in machine learning like Kubeflow pipelines to orchestrate all your steps, but then you have to execute your processing in different components. With Beam, for inference, it's, it's very useful that you can have one pipeline which does both the orchestration and the processing, but I'll uh, show an example of that later. And then finally, already mentioned, but it provides advanced features for streaming use cases. Also uh, show two of our streaming use cases later where those come in handy. At the bottom, you see like a standard machine learning workflow uh, where we have data ingestion, data validation, pre-processing, then model training, uh, and based on the model validation, possibly iteration of the training, uh, we deploy the model and from then on we can gather new data. So here Beam can be used in a lot of components, but especially in the data validation, data processing, and now also in, in model deployment to uh, do inference, it can be very handy. Now, if we want to look deeper into the processing and orchestration, uh, what I mean is, is an example as this. So there's a lot of machine learning use cases where you need multiple models. Uh, you can either deploy models in parallel to do A-B testing, or you can have cascading models where the output of, of, of one model is used as the input in another. Um, for instance, with language use cases, you often have a language model at the front which encodes your text, and then those text encodings can be used by task-specific models uh, downstream to actually make their predictions. For instance, if you want to do a, a classification, um, sentiment analysis, or uh, similar things. One of the other features of Beam I mentioned at the start is the ecosystem uh, around it. So there is uh, one very important one in the machine learning space, which is TensorFlow Extended. So TensorFlow, uh, one of the yeah, most popular machine learning tools, has a framework called TFX, or TensorFlow Extended, which is its MLOps frameworks. So it uh, enables bringing your models to production and also keeping them there, monitoring them, maintaining them. And it is built for a large part on top of Apache Beam. So you can see the different uh, steps that TFX and, yeah, supports from uh, example generation to the pusher at the end. And the ones covered are the ones that it use Beam underneath. So for data ingestion, data validation, data transformation, and model validation, it all builds on top of Beam. Um, also, especially the transform component is one we have used quite often. Um, it allows you to um, build a, a graph of your pre-processing and actually include it as part of your model graph, which is very easy if you want to deploy your model afterwards. Um, and it works very well, again, with Beam. So that's a bit the technical side. 
Um, maybe interesting to see as well what kind of use cases we solve with Beam. So on the uh, left, we have one from earlier this year at the Beam Summit, which is about the online clustering and semantic enrichment of textual data. So this is a use case where we get uh, documents as input. We uh, release some language models on them to do entity extraction, uh, extract keywords from there to uh, assign topics, all kind of metadata that will make it easier to interpret what the document is about. And as a next step, we cluster those um, yeah, per, let's say, topic. For instance, we have news events coming in. We want to cluster them uh, into yeah, things that are happening in the world. Um, so here we use a lot of, of the Beam functionality. Again, the orchestration with a lot of different models, but we also use the state to do uh, the, the streaming clustering. If you want to uh, yeah, go a bit deeper, the talk is available on YouTube. And on the right, we have a talk previously held at DevOps by one of my colleagues about video analytics for football games. Um, so here we needed to do yeah, streaming video analytics. We had the uh, a video stream of a game coming in, and we needed to produce a new video stream with analytics on top. So what you're getting in is, of course, a stream of uh, frames. They are not always nicely in order. They, there might be a delay in there because it's streaming right from the, the field. Um, so there we could really use all, all the features, especially because for some use cases, like the player detection, the ball detection, you only need like one image at a time, and you can do it. For more advanced analytics, like let's say you want to detect when there's a goal or when there's a, a kickoff, you actually need a video fragment to be able to determine that. So we used, for instance, the, the windowing features there to uh, have shifting windows where we would run our uh, event detection models to do this. So again, uh, without Beam, this would have been a, a lot harder of a use case to solve. And this talk as well is still uh, available online. Uh, can highly recommend it. When you want to do model inference in Apache Beam, there's two options of calling the model. On the left, you have the remote hosting of the model as an API. And on the right, you can do local loading of the model on the worker. So have a, have a look into those. Um, so remote hosting so it just means you, you host your model on an available platform, uh, either as a custom API or on one of the machine learning platforms of, of the clouds. And you just call it via a um, yeah, network call from your pipeline. This has the advantage that it's yeah, inherently multi-language, because you can develop your API and your model in any language, and your pipeline in any language, uh, because there's already a non-language specific protocol in between. And it also keeps your pipeline code simple. Uh, there's just some calls to the API in there, but you don't need any model-specific stuff in the pipeline. And then finally, it's also nice that you have flexible model version deployment, so you can deploy new versions of the model without having to touch your pipeline. The disadvantages are, of course, that you have additional latency from the API call. Uh, in streaming cases, this might be important. You need to maintain additional infrastructure for the API. Um, it can be hard to balance the scaling. So Apache Beam can scale quite well, but you need to make sure that your API uh, yeah, scales equally well. Um, and then uh, finally, yeah, the uh, version management can become a bit complex. If you can just deploy models, deploy pipelines uh, without a link, you have to uh, pay close attention that they're still compatible. If you look at loading the model on the worker, so there you're actually going to um, yeah, host a model in the pipeline itself. There, the advantages and the disadvantages are the reverse. So you have no latency uh, from the API call. It's easier to scale because it all scale, scales as one. Um, you don't have additional infrastructure. And uh, there's a, a uh, this might not uh, be an advantage, but a less flexible uh, model version deployment. So uh, switch those, but it's a uh, yeah, simple version management. You can just tie one version of the model to one version of the pipeline. And then disadvantages, um, yeah, the multi-language is harder than with the API call. You have to do it in the pipeline. Now it's possible in Beam, still some additional complexity, but before it wasn't even possible. You have to take into account how to share your model across threads. Um, and this just leads to a lot of boilerplate code in general. Now, if you want to see what this looks like, this is an example of uh, loading a model on a worker. So you need to set it up when uh, your worker starts. You need to 
make sure that it can be shared across uh, threads. You need to call it from the pipeline. And this is just the basics. If you want to run in the production, you probably want to add monitoring on top uh, and some other functionality. So you will really have uh, quite some complexity and boilerplate to handle. Now, luckily, since uh, Apache Beam 2.40, which is two versions ago, there's a third option, which is called Run Inference, and it will take away this boilerplate for you. So you can see the, uh, about the same thing as, as the previous pipeline, but this time using Run Inference. So uh, you can see we, we implement the Run Inference transform at the top and a model handler of which Beam provides multiple. And then we can just call it as a transform in our pipeline. Um, so we provide a model handler to run inference and we just instantiate the model handler with the parameters that we have. So this is one for sklearn, uh, but it also supports PyTorch and it also supports TensorFlow, but only via uh, TFX third party tooling for now, but it will soon be integrated in Apache Beam itself as well. I know there's a lot of other frameworks on the roadmap, but I think these three will already cover uh, a lot of use cases. And important to mention, it's uh, very easy for local, but it will also have a remote option in the future. So if you still want to deploy your model somewhere else, um, you will be able to use the same run inference interface uh, and it will do the remo remote call for you. All right, those are the uh, yeah, different topics I wanted to touch before bringing it all together. So, what we can now do is we can create our Python model. Um, so here it's again, a very simple sklearn model. It's uh, a support vector machine that just takes in two data points, two labels, uh, and it fits on it and we write it uh, as a file. And then we are lucky because I mentioned the SDK wrappers for cross language transforms uh, that, that are available sometimes. So for run inference is available in Java. So if we look here, we have, um, yeah, the, the a combination of our Java pipeline with our Python, with, with our Python run inference. So as always, we create our pipeline. We again specify the schema uh, which is needed. And then uh, you can see that we apply run inference. So it's, uh, it looks like a Java transform. We just specify which model handler we want to use. We specify the schema and then we can provide keyword arguments like the model URI um, and define which additional packages are needed as dependency. So uh, this is more of a detail, but I talked about the expansion service. You can define dependencies here that need to be available in the uh, expansion service and in the uh, execution environment on the worker, or you can actually provide your own environment uh, and your own expansion service for this as well. Um, and then you don't need to use this, this dependency mechanism. So we use the same uh, as always, and uh, yeah, you have your uh, Java pipeline, which can use a Python model. So this is the, the result. It's a quite simple example, um, but the, uh, yeah, I hope it shows some of the very strong uh, concepts that Beam supports. And I'm sure that people with better Java skills can build more complex and useful pipelines than mine. Um, so I invite you to do that as well. There's a very strong Beam community. There's a lot of resources available online with still more to come. Um, so uh, yeah, give it a shot. And I see I went quite fast because I'm already at the end. Um, but that's because I speak fast when I'm in front of an audience. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, and uh, if you want to pose any questions, uh, we can still take some time for that. Yes. Yeah. So um, the question is if it's efficient to move data from Java to big, Python. Big data. Yes, big data. Um, so I don't think this has the biggest impact because it's something that Beam already does underneath because it parallelizes your steps, um, and every time it. Uh, uh, yeah, serializes the data to send it between workers anyway. So I think you'll need to do the same steps here. The only thing is you need to have the additional execution environment in there. And you might have, 
yeah, your pipeline might be a bit less optimized. So there's an optimization step in Beam as well. If you have five steps, which it can combine on one worker, it will do so. If you have uh, cross-language transforms in there, then it might work less efficient, but I'm not that deep into the code to uh, give a, uh, a complete answer to that. Any other questions? No, then uh, thanks a lot. And yeah, you can still come talk to me if you have any remaining questions or if you want to hear, mo hear more about uh, Beam. Thank you.